Capital Hoops, today I am joined by the seventh head coach in DeMatha history, Coach Pete Strickland, who was announced yesterday as the new interim coach, I think is the uh, appropriate title. That's correct, yep. Um, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. I know you've got a lot going on right now on many different fronts, so I appreciate you taking a few minutes to meet with me. Sure. Um, I guess let's just get into it. Tell tell me a little bit. I, I, know, I know who you are, but tell everyone who's watching a little bit about yourself and your background and your coaching resume and just kind of who Pete Strickland is. We won't have much more time, Mark, you know. <laughs> um, so grew up in the area, Mark, uh, grew up in Rockville, and um, my three siblings went to a public high school called Perry High School. And that's what kind of precipitated me going to DeMatha long ago. So I, I went to DeMatha uh, in uh, 72, the fall of 72 as a 10th grader. And, um, and that's what started my relationship with DeMatha, which is, you know, um, kind of still obviously burning today. Um, but yeah, grew up in the area, played for Coach Wooten, went to the University of Pittsburgh, played there for four years, was a three-year captain, uh, graduated as the all-time career assist leader. I think is I'm that, like... Is that still... Where are you now? I am probably, I think, 71st right okay. now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A, lot of, a lot of guys pass you by, huh? Not that far, but uh, <laughs> I'm not, let me just say this, I'm not first anymore. Uh, so uh, that, that was a great four years. Played for a great coach there by the name of Tim Gergerich, okay. who was thought to be still in the pro game, thought to be maybe the best coach and the both best teacher in the pro game. So how lucky was I, as a young kid, to be around arguably the best teacher of the game, Morgan Wooten, and Joe Gallagher wasn't bad either to be around him at camp um, as well when they ran the camp and we all worked for him. And then to play for a guy like Tim Gergerich in college, who was a great teacher. Um, he was assistant on all those great Vegas teams, one that won the national title and uh, one that lost fa infamously to Duke. Um, but he's been in the pros kind of ever since. Um, and then I went overseas, played in Ireland, and that was a great chapter, really enjoyed that. You know, I was in the top row of the team picture mark for the first time. Instead of a little guy in the front with the ball, that was great. Uh, so I really enjoyed that change. Um, and that was really, again, a great experience. Came back and, um, and went to grad school. I was going to be a, I was a theater major in college, and I was going to be a, an actor. And I went to NYU, got into NYU, didn't get into Yale, got into NYU. And then a buddy of mine wanted me to help him coach a JV team up in the Bronx, in Mount St. Michael Academy. And... Probably from the minute I started helping coach that J, helping coach him and coach the JV, uh, my acting career started to go away. So I got, you know, I got caught back up in the game and uh, met my wife there at Mount St. Michael and uh, came back. Morgan called me back and started a three-year relationship with the math as an assistant coach and a teacher. Uh, Mike Bray, Neil Murphy, Dan Ewins, uh, we were all there together. Um, it was a great time, a great time. Uh, and then after three years, uh, I was going to try to pull another Morgan Wooten, go to Ravenscroft High School in South Carolina, in North Carolina, sorry, in Raleigh. But after just one year there, Joe Contafio talked me into coming to the college ranks at VMI. So VMI, Old Dominion, University of Dayton, Coastal Carolina, NC State, GW. That was my chronology. And uh, but kind of, it's nice to be back in Hyattsville. <laughs> and you were you were a head coach at Coastal, is that correct? Correct. Yep. For, mm -hmm. seven, For seven years. years. Seven years. Yep. And yep. that was your only head coaching, aside from coaching yep. Ireland, that was your, at the collegiate ranks, your yep. only? So seven, 18 years as an assistant coach in college, seven years as a head coach. Okay. So what, so Coastal was your last stop at the college ranks? No. So Coastal, then we, I got fired. Okay. Um, and um, then I went to NC State and joined okay. Sydney Lowe, another DeMatha graduate, yeah. local guy. Yeah. Um, we were there at, with Sydney for five years and left there to go to GW and worked at GW for two years. and. And then got out and, um, and you know, was happy to get out. It felt like it was a great run, didn't regret a second of it, and, and then had an opportunity to coach the Irish team, which was really special. They'd been asking me for years, Mark, to do it, and I couldn't because NCAA regulations and even just the time, I couldn't devote to it. But um, then I was able to do it, and that was thrilling. Um, I was named national coach in 16, and um, we, won the FIBA, we, we won a bronze medal in the FIBA Small Nations Tournament in 18 which was uh, the first medal they had won in an international competition in 25 years. Or as my friend Brian Maggot said, that's a quarter century. Sounds better, quarter century. First, first medal they won in a quarter century. And that was a thrill. My wife got to join me so much on that journey, and uh, she's all four of her grandparents are from Ireland, so okay. that was a treat. That yeah, was a treat. I was going to ask you the connection. I know you said you played overseas there, but was that the main kind of 
point of the, the commonality between you getting there was your playing career there? Yes, yeah. So the guys I played with, they evolved into administrators in the game and started knocking on my door to come over and coach the national team. And, um, and it just finally, I just finally had time to do it. So that was great. And what have you been doing? You were the athletic director. For, at, the, for at, the past three years at St. John's Catholic Prep up in Frederick. Formerly and Prospect Hall, right? Correct, formerly okay. Prospect Hall, and that was a great experience. And kind of thought maybe I was done with coaching, um, but uh, certainly was very close to the game, right. you know, with us being in the MIAA and obviously me overseeing the basketball programs, girls and boys, and all the best, all the athletic programs there. So, uh, but probably wasn't, you know, didn't have as much influence as, you know, a coach would have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think all of us that worked and played and, coached under Morgan, I mean, I think kind of Mark, that's what he even views in us is like it, kind of to do what he did right. and affect, you know, folks the way he had such a profound effect on me. You know, outside of my parents, he, he had the biggest effect on me of anyone in my life. And um, we kind of want to do that for others. And, um, you know, as an AD, you, you deal with some kids sometimes, but, you know, you're essentially coaching coaches, which, yeah. I, which I enjoyed. Right. But um, kind of missed it, you know, kind of missed it. Yeah. So let's let's get to present day. Recently, stories break that Mike Jones is rumored to potentially be leaving Dematha. When you hear that news, what are your kind of first reactions and what's going through your mind? Well, I just think of Mike first, I, and I thought of Mike first. Um, so I had recruited Mike when I was at Old Dominion, and uh, with Oliver Purnell, we got him to come. And we had three great years together. Um, then we went to the University of Dayton, um, and Mike had four great years. Uh, our first three years, we went to postseason play every year. And his senior year, he went back to the NCAA, beat Villanova in a big win. Um, so my first thoughts were with Mike. Well, hmm, with Mike, hope, hope Mike, maybe Mike will call if he needs any sounding board, um, which he's done in the past, and I've done with him too. Um, but, um, you know, he worked through it. I know it was very difficult for him. But, yeah, I, just, I was like, that's curious what, am, what Mike's going to do. Um, it was it's kind of funny, Mark, because it really mirrored Morgan's decision he had to make years ago that only us old timers remember when NC State offered him the job and um, you know the money was luring and uh, this money I think was really luring. <laughs> um, so I just felt for him and uh, didn't talk to him really a, a couple texts you know as I think he was going through it. I think he went through it longer than he wanted. And from what I understand, I meant to ask him, but I'm, I think he said no at least once. Um, and, and Mike Young's a good coach and yeah. a good recruiter. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't think he took me over an answer. Um, so yeah, that was, that was those were my thoughts. And did I think about myself there? Um, not not immediately, Mark. No. I want I want to get back to this in a second, but you said something that that piques my curiosity. When Coach Wooten was rumored to potentially have this offer at NC State, how serious did that get? Were people? Oh, it was serious. I mean, I was not working for him at the time, but it got real serious, I think. And, um, you know, and he just, um, I think it came down to, as he used to summarize, why mess with happiness? Right. And he was very happy here. He probably didn't have to have to go financially as much as a high school coach might because camp was going pretty good at that time and went even better later. So I think he, there was some comfort there that, there, there wasn't a financial thing just saying, God, that's a no-brainer, you got to do it. So, But I think it was very, very serious. Very, you know, They courted him pretty hard. And how long into his tenure-ish, do you remember how long that was? You know, I, I was talking with somebody at the math about this the other day, and yeah, I can't do the numbers right now, but I, I think it was kind of comparable yeah. to Mike's, so like 20 years in maybe. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. He started in 58 or 59, and this was right around that time. 78, 79, because Witten, Witten, uh, Sydney, and, and uh, Witt, uh, Derek Wittenberg, I think they won the national title in '83, yeah. and they were part of the guys recruiting him to come. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> I think they told the AD at one time, "We'll get him, coach. So <laughs> don't worry, AD. We'll get him." And <laughs> That's interesting. The parallels, the stories, kind of yeah, draw together. Yeah, very so, similar timeline. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so at what point did you think to yourself? this is a job that I would be interested in or this is a job that I want to pursue or did, at what point were you did you think I should be a, I should be a candidate for this and I'm interested in this uh, I'd say September 5th 1972 oh, I, I, <laughs> maybe I didn't ask that no you're right stay, keep it going keep it going you're fine so that was my that was my first day of school at the math you know uh, playing there I wouldn't have thought about it 
really then, Mark. So, so a little bit of an exaggeration, but certainly when I went back and coached under Morgan, like never would have thought Morgan would leave during the time that I could get the job. Um, but yeah, it's it's a touchstone for me. It's a great place. It's always meant so much to me. Great friends there still. Um, I think what DeMatha does for young people, what it did for me, is extraordinary, and I want to see that happening and continuing to go. So that's it's always appealed to me. Always appealed to me, but never in a subversive or got to work to get that job way. Never, never, never. So when Mike departed a few days ago, yep. at that point, were you immediately like, I got to throw my name in the mix, I'm I got to try to see this through? Yeah, or? immediately interested. Um, didn't know what direction they wanted to go in, you know, and so nothing like that was in the offering right away, but just said, yeah, God, I, I'm here now, I'm in the D.C. area. My wife teaches at DeMatha. Right, I knew that. Yep, and I was like, gosh, you know, I wonder if they want me. And um, then the call came. And uh, I think they, they had interest in, you know, not just me, but um, certainly others. And we have a family, let's face it, that's pretty well healed in basketball accomplishments. Right. So right. I wouldn't be the only guy that would come to front of mind, you know. But uh, once we talked and uh, I, I made it clear that I was very interested and, and I don't know what was going on at their end so much, but I knew I was interested and made it clear. So the, the title, the title interim coach. I know Coach Jones had the title interim coach when he came in. What what exactly does that does that mean? So I mean, it's it, the word means what it means. It's you know you're currently the coach, but it's not a permanence. Um, and I, you know we all know that we have to do our jobs and do our jobs well. So I think that that's a reminder. I think it worked when they replaced Morgan with Mike, and Mike had an interim tag for a year and. Um, I would think that Father James and uh, the powers that be think that hey, that's you know we're one for one with that. Let's let's keep that system going. Um, I think too that probably marked the suddenness of the um, relative suddenness of me being named. I think that would quell the fears of some that it was a knee, knee jerk. I don't think it was a knee jerk decision to bring me on, but it would make people think, okay, great, you know, you know they'll take some more time and make sure it's the right call. Um, certainly, I think it's the right call. So I think that, that, that in time, that hopefully um, I'm still here. But again, what's best for DeMatha is, is what we all want. So what is your first order of business? I know there's probably a long list of priorities and there's a lot of things that you need to tackle, but what, are there any pressing things that you feel like need to be at the top of that list? So, you know, always humans. You know, it's always humans first. It's always players, coaches. Um, I would have liked to have talked to the players today, but they're all down at Boo Williams. Right. Um, and, and uh, Mike said, yeah, you'd have four kids here. <laughs> so the last thing I want to do is my first meeting to have four players. Uh, so, you know, I completely understand the calendar, having been a college coach for 26 years. So we got to get down to Boo. we got to get down to Boo. So that's fine. So Monday we'll get cranking. But the other part of that first party is, of course, our, our staff, you know, Mike's staff. So today I will meet with them at 445 over to Math and looking forward to it, you know, excited to meet with them. Uh, I'm sure they're equal parts uh, – despondent to see their leader go and equal parts excited for what's next and probably everything in between mark you know yeah. so um but we'll, we'll you know in order for us to serve these kids that rely on us so much and th with their dreams you know we're going to have to come together and i don't think that's going to be an issue uh you know reggie Vini, i coached and taught kevin cromer i coached and taught um and i know them all you know i know them all some better than others right. um so this isn't a, a you know let's meet and greet i already know I already know. Anxious to meet these guys. I know, again, they're, they're going to be all over the map relative to missing their leader, but, you know, most of them are DeMatha grads, so, right. you know, we'll figure out a way to come together. Talk to me about how the game has transcended since you've last been at the high school level. I mean, it's there's so many different aspects of it that I'm sure are drastically different than when you were last year, and do you feel like there's almost a learning curve for you to learn certain things that, that maybe you're not privy to or have changed a lot over the years? The the thing I'm proudest of about DeMatha is that we're a school that has a basketball team and yet extraordinary success, nationally known program. And, you know, in fairness, I hate to talk about our rivals in a positive light, but Gonzaga is too. Paul the Sixth is too. They're schools with basketball teams. They're not basketball programs that are attached to a school. That is the part that is changing, Mark, and it scares me, and I don't like it. And, you know, I think those of us who are devoted to the game and the kids that play it don't like it. 
you know, there's pop-up schools, we call them, that, that really aren't putting education first. And that's not good. But DeMatha is not doing that and never will. And that's why I'm proud to be here, and I think that's why they want me here, because they see Father James told me, and it was a compliment. He said, you're an educator and, and then a coach. And I was like, gosh, that, thank you. Yeah, it's a compliment. So I think everybody at DeMatha is that. And Bill McGregor and right on down the coaches at every sport. So exciting time to be here. It is changing. Let's hope that we can be a just a stern stick in the mud, you know, in the changing times with – you know, you look at the top 25 in the USA Today, and every year there's a team in the school that's not really a school. So, you know, we take a deep breath, and we leagues like the WCAC, I think, exist for a reason, and I think kids come to our schools for reasons, and I think I hope that, that we, we stay a beacon in the storm. What do you think your biggest challenges are, either short-term within the next week and long-term going into your first season? Um, well, of course, you always want kids to stay, you know, and, and in this landscape, this transfer landscape that started with the pros, with Paul Pierce going to the Celtics and these ready-made teams and LeBron going to the Heat and the ready-made team with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade and, and all the others that have followed. Um, that's, and, of course, college is now the transfer mentality. So, you know, we want our kids to stay. And, and I've heard that Tyrell Ward, one of our returning seniors, said, I ain't going anywhere. So I already like Tyrell a lot, because <laughs> that's what you want to hear. And, you know, he's a senior, and, of course, he should stay. Forget basketball. He's been at the math for three years. That's that's where he should be, because um, he's already forged what a great career, and he'll be a DeMatha guy forever. So um, so that you're always worried about that. But, the, the you know, if a, you know if, if these guys give me a chance and, let you know, let me work with them for even a week, uh, they'll know who I am. And I think we'll be fine. But the inevitable, if a kid wants to leave and, you know, you can't change his mind. And, but I think if they're open-minded to us, that would, I think we're going to be just fine in terms of that concern. But, of course, that's always a concern. You always want to make sure the kids that are in your program stay. You know, he's got to recruit your, your kids right. the most. You have to recruit other kids, obviously. I learned that of a 26-year 26 26 college coach. You know, we always used to say in college, recruit like you can't coach a lick. And... You know, we would follow it's that. A good motto. Yeah, it's a good motto. We would follow that dictum. Um, but, yeah, just hope our stags stay stags. And, you know, it's time to get to work. Looking forward to summer league and, you know, seeing them play. And I'm toying with whether I'm going to coach them or not, but I'll rely on our staff to kind of we'll work that through that decision. I want to see them, so maybe I don't want to put hands on them right away so I can see them and evaluate them a little bit better. But, um, well, that'll work out, but I'm excited for it. And I hope they're excited about, about us. What about the young the young guys, the the – seventh and eighth graders that Mike and the staff have been recruiting. How pressing is it to kind of continue to continue on that so the pipeline continues to grow? Very important, very important. I've got to call Joe Sega and if I call him two hours late because of this interview, I'm really going to be mad at you, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know he's got a seventh grader who's committed to the math and that's an important thing because kids committed to us at that age. We want to make sure we commit to him. So yeah, there's a lot of calls that have to be made there and some visits to be made. So uh, th that's very important. And of course, you know, living in that world for 26 years as a college recruiter, um, I understand it. I understand it. So, yeah, it's important. we got to get to it. How, how do you think recruiting has changed since the last time you did it? And is that something you're worried about, excited about? What, what are your feelings on that? Well, I, I mean, I hope it's... Uh, I'm, I'm sure the basis of it, on whether it be the collegiate level or the high school level, is still the same. It's relationships, forging relationships, building them, and how do you do that? Um, so I think that's the base of, of it all, whether it be corporate recruiting or you know, basketball recruiting. So I don't think anything's changed there. But, you know, there are rules and regulations, a lot more in college than there are with us. Um, I'm leaning on Glenn Farello about what the rules are, and he lies to me every time. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to take his word for it, but yeah. So we just got to build those relationships. I have some, with um, you know, but not as many as I would have had I been in the high school game recently. Although my three years at St. John's Catholic Prep helped me in that regard. Well, as well. sure it did. Yep. Sure it did. Well, coach, is there is there anything else that, that you want to talk about? Any messages you want to convey to DMV basketball or to Matha folks or, or anyone? Um. Uh, 
I mean, I'm so excited to be back at the mouth. It's a special place for so many of us, Mark. Just not just me, but so many of us who have been touched by, you know, the Demath away. You know, and our our rivals would the mouth away. So, you know, and I expect them to say that they're our rivals. They shouldn't accept that. Um, but it is special to me. You know, and it, you know, it was where I kind of grew up, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And it was where I was touched by Morgan and John Moylan and Buck Offit and so many people who influenced kids there and the new new teachers teachers that influence lives there. So um, just need to be back. So many have reached out. Um, so uh, math alumni and supporters, I'm glad to be representing you guys and please let me hear from you as needed. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, that's good. That's good. There he is, the Matha head coach, Pete Strickland. Coach, we really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Look forward to seeing uh, what you do here in the, in the near future and Thank you. next year and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, but it's...